Good morning, good people. Can you turn with me uh, back to the book of Revelation, chapter 3? Try to finish up where we were last time. I learned, uh, while you're turning, I learned a interesting uh, fact about friendship. Someone told me <clears throat> some years ago that a lot of y'all in here had jerry curls. Almost a whole church. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Gordon is admitting it. Okay. Who was the last one to get rid of their jerry curl? Somebody say Tiffany? Yes. <laughs> Miss Betty. <clears throat> I can't talk about Miss Betty. <laughs> I ain't going down that road. <clears throat> That's Queen Mother, as they call them, Black Panther. <laughs> Queen Mother. <laughs> <laughs> Revelation chapter 3. <clears throat> And we're going to pick up on lessons from a dead church. You join me in a word of prayer. Father, we're thankful for um, being in your house today, God. Please speak to us and uh, revive us where needed. Draw someone closer to you, God. Lord, take this attempt at preaching your word and making clear your word and pray that you do something with it, Father. Pray that where we need rebuke, that you rebuke us, and where we need edify and exhort it, that you edify and exhort us, Father. Help us to break up the fallow ground of our hearts that yes. your word may be sown on good ground and produce the fruit that it is supposed to, Father. Pray for those who aren't here, Lord, that is sick, shut in. We pray, God, that you, that you heal them, Lord, but that you help them by way of your word. Help them to remember that you are present in all things. And no matter what the circumstance may be, Father, that it is working. That you are taking that thing and using it to conform them into the image of Christ. You are using that thing and working it that it may bring glory to you. Although, be it, it be a terrible thing but coming from a God who can turn dead hearts into live hearts. We know that you can take terrible situations and use them for your glory, God. In all circumstances, Father, we ask that you do these things. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. <clears throat> now, excuse me, I lost my voice last week. So it's, it's there partially, or I should say mostly. So I got some fading going out. It ain't that they put me on mute. I just lost it. <laughs> so if it go out all the way, I'm just going to collect my stuff and go sit down. So lessons from a dead church. So last week, um, we got through almost half of the scripture. And we talked about the Lord's examination of the church of Revelation, or church of Sardis, and that everyone looked at this church and saw a great reputation, but when the Lord put his stethoscope to their heart, he seen that they were, in fact, dead. We talked about a couple reasons why this may have happened, or at least one, um, that it's possible that they had unguarded contentment. Unguarded contentment can lead to complacency, Complacency can lead to 
things on the outside of the church slowly making this way on the inside because we aren't or they weren't guarded. Then we got to um, one of the exhortations, the beginning of it in verse 2, where he tells them to be watchful. Uh, to the pastor, he's telling him to be watchful, be vigilant, they watch over your flock, serve as the watchmen on the walls, looking out for the enemy. But also he's talking to those who are dead to wake up out of your spiritual slumber and receive the gospel of Christ. Now on, <clears throat> on to the second exhortation, he tells them, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I've not found your works perfect before God. Strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die. That if you do not, they will. If you do not strengthen these things, they will die. So the word strengthen is the same word in Luke 9.51 where it says that Christ set his face towards Jerusalem. Where it was his time to be raised up, as it says, and he set his face towards uh, Jerusalem. It is resolved that you have a purpose and you've committed yourself to that thing. There's nothing that's going to tear you apart from that. The Lord is telling the pastor here, strengthen those things that are still there. Now, there's a couple things uh, going on here. One is he is probably saying that there are some graces still left in this church, right? They had a reputation. They looked like something. So they had to be doing something, right? Something that made them look holy. So Christ is saying, take those things and strengthen them. Pastor, set your mind, your focus, your heart on these things. So it made me think of uh, Boy Scouts. We got any old Boy Scouts in here? Okay, well, Mr. Washington, you, so you probably were an actual Boy Scout, right? I was a, uh, a hood scout, right? <laughs> Our version of Boy Scouts was whack until the Morgans came along, until, until Mr. and Mrs. Morgan came. Our version of Boy Scouts was horrible. So I don't, I don't remember hardly anything. I, I remember how to tie one knot. I don't know what you use that knot for, but I know how to tie it. But the other thing I, I remember, though, is, and I think it, it resonated because we had a fireplace at home, is I remember building fires, starting fires, putting fires out. Now, the, the one thing uh, that I recall to mind is that when the fire has died down and there's nothing but ashes, it is usually, if you catch it soon enough, amongst those ashes is small embers, right, pieces of wood or material that, that are still on fire, right? They are, they are very small. And if you fan those things, right, if you blow on those things and if you put the right stuff around it, sooner or later that you will have a flame and that thing will ignite everything else around it. So you'll go from one thing to everything else being on fire. This is what the Lord is telling this pastor, that if you go after these graces, like I, I'm assuming since they looked alive that they were regular, there was regular church attendance. So if you take that and you start preaching my gospel, then you'll fan the flame, right? They're showing up for Bible study. If you take that and you preach my gospel, you'll fan the flame. And if you do it long enough and you put the right stuff around it, this church that used to be dead can come back to life. The other thing that, that we see here is it looks like we get, we get introduced to a second group of people. So the first group we see that is the dead church. It is the church that is full of unregenerate people. So the first group is the unregenerate people. Um, if we skip down, we see the third group in verse 4, but those who are faithful, those who haven't defiled their garments. But here, we believe we see a second group, but maybe there were some folks in the church who were, uh, they had a saving faith, but maybe not a, a solid doctrinal trajectory. So the pastor, or the, the Lord is telling the pastors to fix your face 
towards these people. Now, and if you don't, these will die. Now, you, we're talking if they have a saving faith, then they have a true, true salvation. So what does death look like for them? Because it can't be that they lost, they lose their salvation. We know that's not what scripture teaches. Well, I, I witnessed this um, before. Being in a, a different church, a, a small church, very small church, there was the core who, although they had not regularly heard uh, biblical expedition, they were solid and dedicated to God, right? They were faithful. But then in the midst of that congregation, there were a few that were younger in the faith, and some young physically, they, their age was younger. And you watch those, and because there wasn't a commitment to regular biblical teaching, you watch those who were younger in the faith kind of fade out. Right? They're there Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, and then next thing you know, they miss a Sunday. And then they miss another Sunday, and then that keeps going on until the amount of times that they are at the church is, is less than they are away. And what happened is that they didn't leave the body, right? They, they left that building. And because they didn't have any regular understanding of Scripture, regular exposition of Scripture, they left and went to some other thing that was worse than where they were, right? They, they lost any foundation that they had because they weren't getting regular stuff. So I think that the Lord is telling him is to fulfill that Ephesians 4 ministry, right? He gave some to be apostles and prophets, evangelists and pastors, teachers for the equipping of the saints, right? To build up for ministry, but to build into one solid man. If that doesn't happen, then folks won't experience the spiritual liberty they have in Christ and they will be tossed to and fro by every wave and wind of doctrine and trickery, the scripture says. And they won't experience victory because they don't really know the victor. They won't experience the hope because they don't really understand. So I think what the Lord is saying here is that if you don't strengthen these folks, you'll weaken them even more. And they'll, and they'll leave this place, and they'll go on to something worse off. Now, disclaimer, I'm not saying anybody that leaves a church, um, that they are leaving the best situation for them, and wherever else they go, it's going to be worse than that. But in that particular case, these folks were leaving something and going on to lesser things. Now, this makes me think about uh, my grandmother, like other than the girl in the back with all that junk in the trunk back there. She, my grandmother was the most, my grandmother, my mother, the most important women in my life. And I think about when I was about like in the third or fourth grade, I had this little small flower pot that we got from school, with this little flower in it. And by the time I got to my grandmother to give it to her, that thing was just about gone. Right, it was, homeboy was weak. He was struggling. And I, I bust in the door and I said, Grandma, I got, this, I got this flower for you. I said, but, I said, it's, it's dying. And she said, let me see. And she saw it and she said, boy, give me that. And she took it. And I can't remember if it was a week later or two weeks later, but I know when I came back to the house, she had that same little flower pot sitting on the banister. And that little dead little sorry little raggedy plant was back to life and I just remember being so surprised like you you did it like how did you do that and it was she, I can't remember her exact words but it was something like boy I told you I knew what I was doing and I so so this is I think what the Lord is conveying here is that pastor if you strengthen the things that remain right if you fan those flames if you go after those people who are who are who are uh, have saving faith but no real doctrinal trajectory, like I'll take those things and I'll make something out of it, right? It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be large. The fact of the matter is, God knows what He's doing, 
right? I, th I think about that story with my grandmother, and, and the older I get, the more I'm impressed with her confidence. Like, when she saw it, she didn't say, ooh, let me, let me, let me see what I can do. I might be able to do something. But she said, give me that. And I, that's what the Lord is saying. G give me that. Give me those little bit of things, and I can make much of them. I can make much of them. And then he goes on to say, remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Remember, some of your translations may say, remember, therefore, what? Right? They put the what in there because it makes more sense to us to remember what. But the, the word is actually how. Remember how you have received and heard. So he's, he's calling on a recollection that is more than just intellect, but something that stirs up emotion is what the Lord is calling on. And I, I, I hate how in, in Christianity that sometimes you can, you can find folks who makes the, this relationship with Christ so mechanical, right? Show up to church, do your little raggedy devotional, Right. Sing, go home, come back, do it all again. It's so routine, so mechanical, so robotic. But that's not what the Lord is saying. He's, it's, it's further than that. He's saying, yes, remember that I saved you. Remember the doctrine that came. But remember the impression of infection my grace left on your heart. It's deeper than it's deeper than just just doing Right, it's deeper than just obeying. It is it's a relationship with our Father, with our Savior. Now you think about it, he says, uh, Lord, here, uh, Father, here, here they are. I'm presenting these to you. I haven't lost one. That's intimacy to me. Right? The Lord has set his face to go to Jerusalem, and then he's and, and it's and he's setting his face to keep us. That's more than just some salvation as it's presented salvation is so much more right it's this deeper intimacy with the lord so remember not just what you heard but the affection on your heart wherein you heard it and hold fast to that keep that and repent you who are have a saving faith but not much more you remember what you've heard, how you've heard and what you received. You who are dead, remember this gospel that you once heard preached and hold fast to it and repent. Because if you don't, I'm coming. Right? This, this God who the world says that we can do whatever we want because God is love, this same God says, I'm, I'm coming. I'm I'm coming. And I'm coming to you like a thief. No, no thief, unless he's crazy. No thief is giving you a letter. Hey, I'm going to be there around 8 o'clock on Thursday. Just to let you know. Right? That's not happening. But he said, I'm coming when you won't expect it. I was listening to someone preach about Ananias and Sapphires. And they said, what the Lord is driving home there is that you're not safe, right? Be because you are in the grace doesn't mean that the God, that the God of the grace won't judge your character, right? For, for, for some, it may mean something else, but for them, it meant death. And then his words was like, you, God is not playing with us. So he is gracious and he is love, but he is righteous. He is righteous. So if you do not hold fast, if you do not, uh, if you are not watchful, if you do not repent, if you do not remember, I'm coming. But then here's the promise, and we'll, we'll end. He says, you have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. So where's the promise? The promise is in verse 5. But he who overcomes, 
just like those few names, you shall be clothed in white also. And I will not blot out your name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So if we are dead, then the gospel is available. And if we receive his gospel, if we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. Right? You can be saved. And if you are lacking zeal, right, if the cares of the world have come, came in and drowned out what the Lord has done and has killed your zeal and has died you down some, has fanned that flame out, He's saying if you watch and you strengthen what remains and you remember and you hold fast and you repent, you, just like those who have not defiled their garments, will be clothed in white garments just like them. Your name will be in the book of life just like them. And I'll confess your name before my father. Jude says that he'll present us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. One Christian rapper says uh, that the Lord will, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus will take us to his father and say, look, Dad, they all look just like me. They all look just like me. So the lesson is that we are to be watchful and vigilant over our own lives. May we pray? Father, we thank you uh, for this moment to share in your word. Thank you for your exhortation. Thank you for your grace that keeps us, as Peter says, it stirs us up by way of reminder, God, of your holy word. And you don't leave us, but you draw us to you. You walk away, you find us. Just like you did, Peter, God. He goes back out to the boat, and you go preach where he is. You're a wonderful Savior and a great God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.